Hello and welcome to Old Lady Plays. I'm Kate, the old lady, and this is Tips for the Advanced Football Manager number 21. Today, uh, following on from yesterday's talk about short corners, uh, I wanted to talk about defending corners and a bit of common wisdom that's actually not really very wise, and that is marking your posts. Now, I don't, this comes from my own coaching experience and my own experience playing as a goalkeeper. And I was interested to discover that even though I knew that marking both posts was unnecessary, I still had it wrong in terms of what was the most efficient marking system. And that is to mark the back post. And you'll find this in the link that I put in the description. Um, there's a, a number of myths listed at the beginning of this um, this academic report that I uh, found, which busts some of the myths around um, corners. And one of them is that you should mark both posts. Teams that mark both posts concede goals about 2.5% of the time. Teams that mark only the back post get 0.9% of the time. That's a significant difference, and it is significant at a statistically significant level, if that means anything to you. Um, it is seriously significant. It is notably significant. So what that means is when you set up your corner defenses, mark the far post. Do not mark the near post. Now, the reason I used to get this wrong as a goalkeeper myself was because when I start as a goalkeeper facing a corner, I like to start far back in my goal from the corner taker um, and move toward the ball rather than have to backpedal. All right, that's just my personal preference. And so I tended to like to have somebody at the front post because I don't get there as easily when I'm, say, at the two-thirds point away through the goal. So I always had somebody mark the front post, but not bother with the back post. That's effective, but it's not as effective as just marking the back post. Um, as most goalkeepers, when they're under challenge at, you know, at the top levels, um, will actually play much further up in their goal than I did. That's just a difference in style. Um, I knew what I was good at, and so I did that. And that's what I would coach my teams to do. So if I go back to coaching now, I will definitely start by saying back post. We mark the back post because that's where the effective action happens. Um, I'm not sure of the reason why the back post is more effective. I, I can speculate that it is because the goalkeepers are further forward in the net and therefore um, have a harder time backing up anybody does. Backpedaling is harder than running forward. Um, and so if you put someone at the back post, they are covering the goalkeeper's back ineffectively. Um, I never bothered in part because at the levels I was playing, people could rarely hit it far enough to be a threat at the back post. And so it was pointless wasting a player marking the back post when the back post wasn't going to score. Um, but in, in the levels that we are playing at, even, you know, the lower levels of, of lower leagues, we're talking about professional players or, or mostly professional players or high level amateur players. And we're talking about players who can handle the ball and who can hit it far enough to make the back post a threat. So the back post is the place to mark when you have a corner to defend. So I hope you found that useful. I know it's a little bit off of common wisdom, but it's certainly something I've been trying in my games. I've been defending corners with one post for about a year and a half now, and we're pretty good at it. We don't give up many corners. So I, I haven't done the data, so I don't know whether or not it's actually, you know, super better or anything. But I will certainly be switching it to the back. In fact, I already have switched it to the back post. And I'll be seeing how that works out over the next few weeks in my uh, Basking in Glory save. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. And take care.